And at least, at the very least, by trusting your gut, all of your music will be something you're proud of. So even if nobody cares, at least you know that that beat that you put out, you felt confident, 100%, no questions, and that lives there and it, and it satisfies that need for you. And if it doesn't resonate with people, you're at least left with that. For me, it was the first thing I knew I could control was consistency. Um, it was like, how often do I need to put beats out? Or how often can I handle putting beats out? I was still in college at the time, taking a full course load. And I was like, college became a thing of like, I had no, paid it no mind. I was so obsessed. I was like, okay, I'm gonna put out a beat every other day and I'm not gonna miss. I'm gonna do it no matter what. If I have to come home from class to make a beat, make a beat in class, if I'm at a party with friends and I need an upload tomorrow, like things just, you kind of prioritize that and consistency because I couldn't control how people were receiving the music. Um, and I don't think you ever can. Mac Miller had passed away in 2018 and I took like this deep dive into his music and he was a super big inspiration for my sound. And that's kind of what I was doing was making a lot of things that sounded like him. Um, so I started posting them with that tag and people just really took after it. And then you funnel them, I would funnel them straight to BeatStars. I didn't really complicate it. I didn't want to do anything out of the norm because it was working. After that first year, it was that feeling of like, I'm literally just making the same beat over and over again. Um, it's not as exciting as it was. Like, you know, why am I starting with the same type of instrument or loop and then building off of that? And then people aren't really wanting it anymore because I've done it 150 times. Um, and it wasn't until maybe within two years when I decided that I think the best thing I could do is kind of pivot my whole brand and my whole creative process to what do I want to make. And I just kind of decided to just trust my gut, make whatever, and then figure out how to package it and try new names. And like it was a whole year of just experimenting with how I was branding myself online, making new music and new artists. And then I kind of realized I was like, you basically just like unlock a whole new section of music. It was like people now want R&B from me. You're gonna have the core group of people who wanted that specific sound. Now I've built a fan base within my fan base who wants this specific sound. And it really like opened my eyes to this creative freedom of like, I can make whatever I want. As long as I understand what people are looking for. Um, within music. Like if I want to make R&B, what artist does it sound the most like? But also what artist, you know, has that following that people want to sound like them. People want their sound. At heart, I'm a people person. And that was one of the most exciting things was not only the eyes and the people listening, but the overwhelming amount of people who would comment and email and I kind of realized I was like, there's something to be said here. It's like, if these people are gonna take the time to listen to me, leave a comment, well, why don't I should answer every message, every comment. And I think that's kind of lost on people. A lot of people are too busy or they don't, aren't people persons and that's fine too. But, and I started really just building connections with people in my fan base and kind of like giving them the time of day. It was like, I appreciate your comment. I'll respond accordingly and People would send me music, I would listen to it, give feedback, and kind of just decided to take a more personal approach to like how I grew my audience and my brand. And quickly realizing that they also appreciated that. And it led to more people interacting and using it and giving feedback and taking negative feedback or if something, and being really open to that as much as it could kind of sway your creative process. Um, Cause I know guys who don't want to get any external input because they think it will deviate the, like the process in which they create and it'll throw them off the tracks. And, um, and I kind of just really clinged onto that and learned about just like psychology in general and what people want and how they're interacting and, and ways to keep them engaged with your stuff, whether it be on Instagram or through email and YouTube and, um, just trying to be a more proactive person and more community based. I saw a video two weeks ago that was, it came up on YouTube. It was how to sell like an artist. 
And it kind of like touched on everything that I'd already been doing and gave me this like whole boost of confidence where it's like, I like to use an artist like Tyler, the creator as an example, like marketing can be equally as fun and creative as your music. Um, I enjoy making videos and really love like shooting and learning that. So it's like, how do I merge these two worlds and use those videos to put myself even further out there? And then when people come in through that avenue, everything else matches. Like you said, the Instagram, the YouTube, everything feels like one unit. If you're making a beat and you're saying, I really don't think this is the one, I don't feel confident putting this out. I don't think you should do it because you know, and, and at least at the very least, by trusting your gut, all of your music will be something you're proud of. So even if nobody cares, at least you know that that beat that you put out, you felt confident, 100%, no questions, and that lives there and it, and it satisfies that need for you. And if it doesn't resonate with people, you're at least left with that. When you start to get songs with artists that are at like a decent level where you start to find songs where it's like, holy crap, this song has six, seven, eight million streams on Spotify. And you start to realize it's like, well, I don't think I ever got a check from that, but I know I should be getting um, a check from that. And it was around the same time I was working with the VStars people and really getting involved in that world and saying yes to everything that they, they wanted to do um, in both of those relationships. And like, I figured out that they had just launched the publishing thing and asked me to come on board in the early stages. And I was really excited about that. I had no clue. I mean, I was so uneducated on everything. And it's beautiful, like the timing in which things are happening, like having a BeatStars Academy, when I think fundamentally, we are so uneducated on everything within music. I'm still so confused on how these percentages work. How do I collect them? I mean, I don't even know. And there's still so much money and uncollected things out there that will take time. And it was, yeah, so getting into that was like, just seeing the numbers grow and, and starting to get songs with people and realizing that there's this whole other side of income that I could tap into. And then you start to learn that a lot of it isn't what it seems, you know, when you sell a beat and you get two points on the master, you're like, wait, publishing only applies to a very small fraction of these royalties and radio. But then the master percentage is what you're going to get a lot of those streaming royalties on. So you're like, dang, I get 50% of this, but I only get 2% of this. Who gets the other 98%? It's like, well, the label gets 90. The artist gets 10 and they're allowed to give you two. And it's like, wait, we, we just worked on all this music. We made all this music and we're getting like pennies from all these creations. And I think that's why you're seeing this massive shift in music and people are kind of like finally fed up and everyone's trying their best to make it on their own in whatever way that means. Not that there's anything wrong with these big, big labels and companies. I mean, I'm not knocking anybody because I think they serve a purpose, but yeah. So it was seeing those numbers come in and, and just being really confused and wanting to learn more. And it's still something that you get the quarterly publishing checks and you're like, it still doesn't quite make sense. You know, there's 80 million streams out there this year and you got a, a portion of that. It's like still so much uncollected and trying to educate yourself on that and find people who, again, wanna collect it and wanna help you, but do it with your intentions. Keeping a detailed catalog of what you've produced doing everything in your power to find it as early as possible and registering it as soon as possible. If you get a song with an artist that you are like, I listened to this artist for the last five years before I was even doing this and now I have a song with them and it's like, that's gonna come out. You don't wanna do anything to jeopardize that. So when the their legal team asks you what percentage you want, you're like, wait, do I? Do I ask for a lot? Because if I say too much, then they might pull the song or they might not be able to. And it was like taking less on advances because you were afraid to ask for more money, taking less on publishing because you didn't understand how much you're actually supposed to get, Googling how much of a like master points, how, how much am I entitled to as a producer? Three to five. Okay, I'll just ask for three because that's a safe bet. Then they usually come back and say, we'll give you two. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. The song's going to come out. I don't really care. And it was just taking everything because it was, you didn't have, I didn't have a team in place. I didn't have a lawyer. And at the time it's like, I'm not going to spend thousands of dollars to get 2% more on a song. But in hindsight, it's like, 
well, these, these people have a budget per song. You know, their budget could have been six grand on the production for that one song and you asked for 1200 and hiring a lawyer for 800 bucks could have made you 4,000 more dollars. And it was like this little thing like you discovered on. And then you also discover as a producer, you have a lot more pool than I think people realize because these artists are the same as us. They're making music because they love it and they're attached to it and they want it to come out. But I, I really would just encourage people to value your craft at what you think it's worth. Don't lowball yourself. I had a beat once that somebody asked to buy and I gave them a ridiculous number because I thought that that was what the beat was worth and they bought it. They're gonna be a little more hesitant and they're gonna kind of try and play the game, but you have so much more control than you think. And I don't think I've ever had an experience where I've put a number out or said what I wanted and had the song pulled. If you think your beat is worth 10,000 or has the earning potential of $10,000 on YouTube, don't sell yourself short of that money just because you think you have to or because the song won't come out. It comes back to like the same thing, the same approach I take with like music and just building a brand in general, kind of like respecting yourself and being true to yourself and kind of saying, mm -hmm. there's certain things I'm gonna put up with, there's certain things I'm willing to take, but also there's some things that I just won't. You know, I'm not gonna give stuff away if we don't have a connection or if I don't believe in the record. And it's like knowing when to do it, I guess. It's kind of like if you value that relationship with that person and there's been a ton of communication and they just can't meet your needs, you just have to make the decision of, is it more important to get paid for this beat or is it more important to maintain this relationship? And usually I'm always gonna pick the latter, but some people won't. Some people, you got bills, you need money that month. You might have to make that hard decision where it's like, no, I need to be paid. I'm willing to sacrifice this relationship. And I've had to do that a couple times where you have to kind of circle back and say, hey, you know, I feel like we handled this well. I haven't been compensated. You know, then you put your foot down and you say, and, and I feel like most of the time, especially if you're owed something that you haven't been, you know, they haven't delivered on, most of the time people are gonna be pretty understanding of that. But yeah, for me, it's just valuing a relationship more than, than the quick buck or the quick hit or the fact that I can say I was a part of something because I think that that is gonna just play way better long-term. You know, it's, it's hard to like look back on that. Those questions have always been difficult because I think all of the decisions and things I did led me to this point. Now, whether if I changed something, would I be in a better position or a worse position? It's kind of like hard to think because you, I needed to not understand what I was doing to fall on my face and figure it out. And I needed to do all these things. And even now I do things where I'm like, well, that wasn't, that wasn't the move. And, but I would, I would say if it's like, if someone's out there and like getting into music, the best thing would be from the start, is just go with trusting your gut. Like, Think about the fact that you want to build a world that you can bring people into and also understand how important everything else is outside of music from branding to learning business. I think that's where a lot of people kind of struggle. And like I said earlier, I had role models in my life who have been in that world outside of music, business owners and things like that, who I got very, very lucky with getting that advice, but just trusting your gut and understanding that like, that is really all you have. You can't control people. You can't control how people are going to listen. And from the get go, if you build that and just have that mindset, I really think everything will, will play out very well and save for taxes. That's the biggest little technical piece of advice um, that all of us were like, whoa, wait, you guys didn't take this out already? We got to pay this? <laughs>